Is it a manometer or a manometer? If that's been keeping you up at night too, or if you just want some ideas on how to improve your dust collection, then you're going to like this episode of the Stumpy Dumps Workshop. First of all, let's clear things up. A manometer is that thing I got off the internet that's supposed to tell me that I'm really manly. It hurts a little bit. A manometer is one of those fancy doodads that measures pressure. And that's almost as interesting because it can tell us when a dust collector is not running at its peak performance. I guarantee you've used a manometer before. You just didn't know it because you thought you were using a sphygmo manometer. Am I right? I make that mistake all the time. That's that thing on the wall at the doctor's office that they use to measure your blood pressure. My doctor still does it the old fashioned way with needles and a wooden ruler. But I hear there have been some real improvements in blood pressure measuring over the years and that particular style that they use now is of interest to us because it uses liquid to measure pressure. The principle is simple. You put some liquid in a tube and as the pressure increases on one end, it moves the liquid. By measuring the change in the levels of the liquid, you can determine how much pressure is being exerted upon it. And where do you find the most pressure in your workshop? Besides your wife pressuring you to make her new cabinets? Your dust collector. We usually think of our dust collectors as sucking, but they don't call that spinny part inside a sucker. They call it a blower. I don't really know who they are, but in this case, they are right. The motor spins the impeller, which pushes air into your filters. And that air has to come from somewhere, so it pulls it from your woodworking machines. The more air your blower pushes into your filters, the better your suction at the machine. So of all the parts of the dust collection system, the ducts, the hoses, the blast gates, the machine hookups, all of them are pointless if you don't have peak airflow. Now you might remember we did a series of videos a while back that talked about impellers and motors and what size you needed to generate the most airflow for your system. But the fact is you can have the biggest blower on earth and it won't matter if there's nowhere for that air to go. You see the bottleneck in most dust collectors is the filter. It can only allow so much air to pass through it. And the less air going out through your filter, the less air that's coming in from your machine hookups. So let's take a minute to talk about filters and then we'll see how to build one of those manometers. Filters come with different ratings. Some are rated in microns, some have a MERV number, some don't have anything on them at all. It's very confusing. But here's what you need to know. The bag style filters are junk. They're catching chips, but they're letting all the fine dust out. Older bags can let stuff as big as 30 microns escape. And in the last five years or so, some dust collectors have changed over to five micron filter bags, but that's still not enough. OSHA requires commercial shops to filter out anything larger than a half a micron. So a bag filter turns that expensive dust collector actually into a giant dust pump that takes the fine dust from your machines and blows it into the air throughout the shop. Efficient, if you wanna breathe it in, not so much if you want to stay healthy. I know, you're probably one of those people that says you can just stick your face into the dustbin and snort all you want. If you're one of those guys who doesn't mind the risk of developing dust allergies, respiratory infections, cancer, go ahead and roll those dice. I'm not a doctor, but I do pretend to be one from time to time. And I'd rather be safe now than sorry 25 years from now. I don't expect that dust is gonna give me cancer. But I do know of people who have developed a serious wood allergy because of their overexposure to dust that has forced them to give up the craft they love. And that would be a shame. But letting too much dust out isn't the only reason that filter bags suck. The biggest reason is they don't actually suck at all. <laughs> you see what I did there? Suck. They might look big, but they only have about 35 square feet of filter surface. Even a moderately powered dust collector like the single stage units from Harbor Freight or Jet or Grizzly, they are capable of moving two to three times as much air as their bag filters can handle. Your bag is killing your suction. So why do they put them on there? 
Well, because they're cheap. Good air filters are pricey. If Harbor Freight added a $150 filter on top of their $200 dust collector, a lot of woodworkers would just be priced out of the market. I admit to being one of those woodworkers. I bought my first dust collector from Harbor Freight with a coupon for $120, and that was pretty much all I was willing to invest at the time. But after a while, when my bank account recovered and I realized that my collector could be collecting a lot more dust at the machine and spitting a lot less of it into the air for me to breathe, I started thinking about upgrading the bag filter to a cartridge. This is a cartridge filter for a single stage dust collector, like your Harbor Freight, Jet, Grizzly, those kind of collectors. It's a nano filter, which means it has a MERV 15 rating. It collects virtually 100% of anything larger than a half a micron. That's 1000% finer filtration than even the newer five micron filter bags. And since it's pleated, it has about 275 square feet of surface area, almost eight times as much as a bag filter. This one goes on top of the dust collector at the Mustache Mike Shop, which is kind of a Harbor Freight jet hybrid. But here at the Stumpy Nubs Workshop, we use a Cyclone which is a much bigger system, and that means it needs much more filters. Here we use a stack of three filters. These are MERV 15 with a surface area of 300 square feet each for the top two filters. A powerful cyclone like the Clearview requires two of them, but some of the smaller cyclones that are on the market could use just one. So would a filter upgrade make a difference in your dust collector? Absolutely. If you have a bag filter, upgrading to the right cartridge will not only dramatically improve the quality of the air coming out of your system, it will also give you a big boost in suction. You're really going to be surprised. If you already have a cartridge style filter like this, you may still want to consider an upgrade because now they make nano filters, which are significantly better than the older ones. They can increase your fine dust filtration and your airflow. And since there's no such thing as enough airflow, there's one more upgrade you can make if you have one of the Cyclone setups. It's this little filter here on the bottom. This replaces the cleanout box that you normally have to buy or build to put it on the bottom of your filter stack. It just clips onto the bottom with these clips that are sold separately, and the pan catches all the fine dust that accumulates at the bottom over time. But the best part is, it adds another 30 square feet of MER 15 filtration. That's about the same amount as an entire filter bag right in that teeny little cartridge pan. The point is, you want your filters to allow as much air to come out of your blower as possible. So the more surface area, the better. But even the best filters will eventually get clogged, which starts to restrict that airflow. If you want your system to keep running at top efficiency, you have to know when your filters need cleaning. That's where the manometer comes in. As your filters start to plug up, the airflow coming out of the blower is restricted. That builds up pressure. The dirtier your filters, the more pressure that's going to build up. It's not a lot of pressure, but with a sensitive enough meter, you can monitor it. Then you'll know if your filters need cleaning to keep the maximum air flowing. So let's build one. You're going to need a few feet of quarter inch vinyl tubing, a nylon double barb, which fits inside that tube, and a rubber stopper of some kind, like one of these old sink stoppers that you can find in home centers. And there's a few other miscellaneous things that we'll get to as we go along. First, you have to drill a hole in your dust collector. Don't freak out. It's not that big a deal. It's for a good cause. And besides, if you change your mind down the road, which I don't know why you would, but if you did, you can easily pull the plug out and uh, close it back up. If you have a cyclone, you'll want to put the hole in the transition between the blower and the filters. If you have a single stage collector with one of these big cartridge filters, then you're going to want to put your hole right in the top. The hole has to be large enough for your stopper to fit in without pushing all the way through. For mine, that's an inch. Now you'll drill a hole in your rubber stopper so that one of the ends of your hose barb can fit inside it. You want to use some nice goopy adhesive to glue the hose barb into the stopper and then to glue the stopper into the hole on your collector. Now find a nice scrap of wood, about uh, 4 inches wide and 12 to 14 inches long. This is what your gauge will attach to. So find a handy place to mount it. I'm not sure if it matters, but I feel like it should be as close to the rubber stopper as possible while still being handy to read. The reason why we're choosing our mounting spot now is so we can figure out how long we want our tube to be. 
So stick the tube onto the hose barb in that stopper, then run it down to the wood plaque wherever you're gonna mount it, and mark where it touches the top edge of the plaque. Then you can take everything off and over back to your bench. Here's where the serious technical work is done. Lay a ruler along the edge of your plaque and mark a line every quarter inch. This will be your scale. Now drill a pair of 1 8 inch holes a quarter inch apart in each of the top corners of the plaque, about a quarter inch from the sides and about an inch from the top edge. Drill two more pairs of holes about 8 inches below those holes. And then drill a final pair of hole one above the other at the center of the bottom of your plaque, about a half inch from the edge. Now lay your tubing on the plaque, right over top of those holes, and secure them with some wire or some plastic zip ties. Remember to line up that mark you made on your hose a few minutes ago with the top edge of your plaque. Trim the excess off the other end of your hose, and it's time to actually mount the plaque. How you mount it really depends on where you mount it. I mounted mine to the filter itself using a couple more zip ties. Now you need some sort of colored liquid. I suggest scotch or water or scotch and water. Or you can just use plain water, but put a drop of food coloring in it so it's a little easier to see. Then use a funnel or an eyedropper or something and carefully pour a little bit into the tube so that it fills up about halfway. That's pretty much it. If you want, you can stuff a little bit of cotton in the other end, the end that doesn't connect to the hose barb, uh, to prevent some evaporation or I don't know if you get a lot of pressure and just wants to spray out, but I don't really see that happening. Here's how it works. With a fresh new filter, when you turn it on, the distance between the levels of water on each side of that tube should be less than a half an inch or two marks on your plaque. With the filter you've recently cleaned, they should be less than an inch apart when the collector's on. And when the difference ends up being about two and a half inches with the collector on, then you know it's time to clean your filter. Using the proper filters and keeping them clean is critical to getting all the suction you can out of your dust collection unit. You invested a lot of money in it. You may as well get the most out of it. We're putting together a new dust collection section over at stumpynubs.com with more great tips, tricks, and information on the way. In the meantime, check out all the other woodworking goodness we have over there. And you'll notice on the homepage that you can now get Stumpy swag. We've opened a new t-shirt and other stuff store. So check that out too. It's a good place to sit back and have a cold one, which I don't have. But you've earned it, my friend.